Our last speaker, Ray Fournier, is a public school teacher down in North Carolina, over 15 years experience. He brings a unique perspective to this issue because he doesn't have to listen to what other people are saying is or isn't going on in the public schools. He sees it every day. That prompted him to write the Education Reformation and also to start up Worldview Christian Academy and also get himself in a little trouble by making his opinions public. And you can, you can just uh, Google his name on the internet and see the trouble that he started. And I'm thankful for that kind of trouble getting started. We need more people willing to speak out on issues on this topic. Should Christian parents send their children to the public schools? Absolutely not. I've been a public school teacher for the past 15 years. I have been an eyewitness to the indoctrination of our children and its results. This is not just um, an intellectual debate for me. This is reality. This is everyday life. I have seen our children be tortured by the anti-Christian public school curriculum and toxic student culture five days a week, 180 days a year for the past 15 years. Christian parents, I know that you love your children. I know that you want a good education for them. And I know first and foremost, that you want your children to follow Jesus Christ with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I know because you feel this way, that you will listen to my warning. I am like a, like a fireman coming from a burning building with the smell of smoke still on my clothes. And I'm pleading with you, get your children out. The building is on fire. Your children are in grave spiritual danger. Get your children out, they're burning alive. The Christian church in America needs to wake up between 70 and 88% of children from Christian homes walk away from the visible church by the end of their freshman year in college. 40% by the end of middle school, that young. 80% by the end of high school. So the damage is done before they even leave our households. Less than 1% of all Americans between the ages of 18 and 23 have a biblical worldview, including children from Christian homes. These are not just impersonal numbers and percentages to me. When I hear these numbers, all I can see in my mind are the faces of parents and former students that I've had countless conversations with. I've been in prayer groups with parents weeping over their lost children. I have gone to town events and witnessed to many of my former students. I have seen them go astray. I have seen them be corrupted. I have seen them turn away from Christ. Millions of our children are on the road to hell. And the truth is, the public schools are a big part of the problem. But most pastors, they don't seem to know or acknowledge this. Most conservative pastors would agree. Secular humanist attacks in the Bible, the secular media, and peer pressure are all serious spiritual threats to our children. But the question is, where do our children meet these threats all in one place? And the answer is clear, the public schools. Yet very few pastors preach on the spiritual dangers of public education, let alone call them to get their kids out. The public schools are truly the elephant in the room, and I praise God that we're finally speaking about this issue. Those that claim that the practice of sending children to public schools is a matter of Christian liberty are making this claim based on the following two assumptions. The public schools don't violate God's word. It doesn't say thou shalt not, so we can do it. And there seems to be this ignorance that public schools are harmless. And both of those are wrong. If you compare the public education 
with the word of God, you will find that the practice of sending our children to the public schools breaks six clear commands and principles from scripture, sabotages the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and encourages our children to break each and every one of the Ten Commandments. The following is how public education breaks the Six Commands and Principles of a Biblical Education, summarized from my book, Education Reformation. Principle number one, education belongs to the family, supported by the church, and not to the state. Under public education, the government determines what the children will be taught, not the parents. Their parental rights stop at the schoolhouse door. The idea we can, that we can opt out our children of anything is something that the schools don't have to do for us. If they do, it is through God's common grace. But the reality is, when we send them there, legally, we don't have the right. Principle two, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The public schools are not a Christian entity. Sending our children to the public schools clearly yokes us with unbelievers. Principle three, teachers must have a godly character because a student will become like his teacher. Luke 6, 39 through 40. Most public school teachers are not Christians. Even if they are, they're prevented from teaching a biblical worldview. And if they do, if they go in there as, as, as salt and light and they do teach a biblical worldview, they will be fired. Principle four, bad company really does corrupt good character. Data from national surveys tell us that of an average 30, stu 30 student high school class, 15 out of 30 are sexually active. 23 out of 30 believe that homosexuality is an acceptable alternative lifestyle. Why do you think we're losing on this issue in the culture war? 14 out of 30 don't see a great risk in heavy daily drinking. 12 have used marijuana. Nine admitted to stealing from a store within the past year. 24 out of 30 admitted to lying to their parents about something significant. 18 admitted to cheating on a test during the last year. And even though they've done these things, 28 out of 30 are satisfied with their personal ethics and character. Can you believe that? The public school student culture is truly bad company. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Principle five, a biblical education is relational. And yes, I have Deuteronomy 6 here. I think we can apply it that, that our parents do, you know, should be the primary influence on their children. On the other hand, public education was deliberately de designed to separate children from their parents. In public education, the government curriculum the media and peer groups replace the parent's role as their children's primary influence. Principle number six, biblical content. The content of a Christian education must be gospel-centered, saturated with the fear of the Lord, focused on the centrality of the word of God, imparting a purely biblical worldview, instructing students with apologetics, evangelism, biblical family roles, prayer, Bible study, scripture memorization, Christian service, involvement in a local church, and career training, which involves every, all the academic stuff. This is the complete opposite of what is found in the public schools. The idea the public school curriculum is religiously neutral is a lie. It's a myth. The public schools deliberately indoctrinate children into a Jesus-hating, morally relativistic, secular humanist worldview that is at war with biblical Christianity. Sending our children to the public schools would be like ancient Israelites sending their children to Pharaoh's schools where they were taught to worship pagan gods, or early Christians sending their kids to Roman schools to learn emperor worship. Christian parents listen to Jesus' warning. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Matthew 18, 6. Think about this verse when you think about when you put your kid on that school bus. Does public education violate the word of God? Absolutely, yes, it does. This alone removes public education as an option for Bible-believing Christians. 
Public education is not covered by Christian liberty. It is not like eating meat sacrificed to idols. It is not harmless. It is spiritually deadly. The public schools intentionally indoctrinate students into the religion of secular humanism. Now, the first thing that Christians need to know about secular humanism is that it is an actual or, um, religion. It's been recognized by the United States Supreme Court. This occurred in the Tarasco versus Watkins case in 1961. The fact that secular humanism is an official religion that teaches a worldview that is at war with biblical Christianity is, is the truth. And secular humanism is a religion complete with a replacement for God, the word of God, our life's purpose, God's law, sin, hell, and even the gospel. Secular humanism replaces God with man as the ultimate authority in the universe. The word of God is replaced by man's ability to observe and reason. Living for the glory of God is replaced by living for our own glory and pleasure. God's law is replaced by more relativity. Sin is replaced by anything that prevents us from achieving our own glory. Hell is replaced by failure. The gospel is replaced by having faith in ourselves, believing in ourselves instead of God. Now, the public school curriculum indoctrinates students into this religion. By teaching the Big Bang Theory, evolution, and revisionist history, the public school curriculum removes God as creator and sovereign judge of the universe. And as a result, his word has no authority in the minds of public school students. Since they teach evolution is true, students come to believe that Adam and Eve were just a myth. And as a result, the fall never occurred and original sin does not exist. In addition, since the public schools teach that secular psychology is true, students are taught that they are, they are inherently good people. By removing God as creator and sovereign judge from the minds of students, they come to believe that an absolute moral law must not exist. And as a result, sin is a figment of people's overactive imaginations, and there's no such thing as divine judgment. Since students are taught that they are inherently good and an absolute moral, moral law doesn't exist, they don't have to fear God's wrath against evil, they can sin to their heart's content, and they have no need for a savior. In the end, based on secular humanist religion taught through the public school curriculum, Jesus Christ as presented in the Bible is an unnecessary myth. If one believes that the public schools or the public schools teach, the call to repent of our sins and trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior would be foolishness. This is how the public school anti-Christian curriculum that teaches secular humanism sabotages the gospel of Jesus Christ. Aren't we supposed to be gospel-centered and Great Commission-focused as a church in America? Or we send our kids to, the, to a place that demolishes the very message that the Holy Spirit used to regenerate our hearts and lead us to repentance and faith in our Lord and Savior. What's missing here is love. Love for God and love for our children. To our shame, the secular humanists know the true purpose of the public schools more than most Christians. I'm going to read to you several quotes from well-known humanists. Charles Francis Potter said, education is the most powerful ally of humanism, and every American public school is a school of humanism. What can the theistic Sunday schools meeting an hour once a week and teaching only a fraction of the children do to stem the tide of a five-day program of humanistic teaching? He had incredible faith that the public schools would do the job of evangelizing our children into the religion of secular humanism, and he wasn't alone. Horace Mann, father of public education, said, what the church has been for the medieval man, the public school must become for democratic and rational man. God would be replaced by the concept of public good. And then we hear a message recently about it's for the public good. That's Horace Mann, a humanist. John Dewey, the father of modern American public education, look what he says. There is no God. There is no soul. Let me repeat that. There is no God. There is no soul. Hence, there are no needs for the props of traditional religion with dogma and creed excluded. 
Immutable truth is also dead and buried. There's no room for fixed natural laws or moral absolutes. Wow. From the very beginning, from the birth of the public schools in America, take a look at what philosophy ruled the day. Now, for the, in the present, the NEA. The schools cannot allow parents to influence the kind of values education where th their children receive in school. That is what is wrong with those who say there is a universal system of values. Our humanistic goals are incompatible with theirs. We must change their values. It's an indoctrination center. And I've been there for 15 years. And yes, my soul is vexed. And I have to speak. The public schools were intentionally designed by our enemies to destroy our children, our families, and our churches. As a result, millions of our children are, go are on the road to hell. The Christian church in America is truly in the middle of a generational crisis. The situation has gotten so bad that it is impossible to deny that we're losing the next generation. We need an education reformation. We need to abandon the public schools and return to the word of God for how to educate our children for his glory. If God used this message to inform and awaken you, don't hesitate for a moment. Rescue your children from the public schools immediately for the glory of God. I know this will be challenging and sacrifices will have to be made, but with God, all things are possible. God will help you do what needs to be done to accomplish his goals. If your family is in a very difficult situation due to disability, illness, economic crisis, or single parenthood, and you're thinking, this is impossible for us, do not, do not be dismayed. I'm not here to condemn you in any way, shape, or form. Ask God to provide a way. Seek help from the church and other like-minded believers and start making a plan of action. It may take some time. But if God has changed your heart, God will help you make it happen. God has given the church the responsibility to encourage, equip, rescue the, their children, and give them a truly biblical education. Pastors. I always hear sermons about love the church. Well, pastors, love the church for the glory of God. Be like the good shepherd who will die for his sheep, willing to lose his ministry if he has to. Not like the hired man that runs away and keeps his mouth shut. Warn, equip, and help the church rescue their children. Church, it is time to love one another. I love the one another's. Well, here's one. Love one another. Help each other provide our children with a truly biblical education for the glory of God. Parents, which I am one, it is time for us to deny ourselves. Pick up our cross and follow Jesus' commands and principles regarding the, how to educate our children for his glory. It is time for an education reformation. For more information, including a complete refutation of the salt and light argument and the tearing down of evolutionary theory with the scientific method, mind you, because it's not a science, it's a religion, I encourage you to download my book, Education Reformation, for free. From worldview at worldviewchristianacademy.com. May God bless you and your families. Thank you. I want to suggest something that you should all be thinking. I want to agree with Pastor O'Brien. Most Christians in our day don't think. They are not thinking people. We are losing our culture. We are losing the Christian culture. The church is losing the next generation. Regardless of your position on education, we're losing because we don't want to think and we don't want to discuss openly. This kind of thing should be going on in a number of different issues. Someone will have to go away sad if they don't think they present it as well as the other. Someone will go away thinking, some of the audience didn't like me. I could tell by the way their faces looked. That's the way real life is. When we get up and we say to our politicians, why didn't you challenge them on that that they said? Well, no, we've got to start in the church. 
And whether a pastor holds this view or this view, we need to realize that truth advances when truth is put head to head with error. We need to be people that are willing, willing, even with our friends, even in our churches, to discuss things like this openly. Do it in a Christian manner, but realize that nobody wins when we try to keep everyone comfortable. Okay? Comfort is not the goal. The advancement of truth is the goal. And with that, we'll close. Let me close with a prayer, if you would. Our Lord and our God, you have given us opportunity here today to hear numerous positions. Lord, I thank you for the willingness of all the participants to come together to present what they believe is the, the reasonable and biblical argument. Lord, we pray that you'd give your people here in this room and those who will see this over the internet, we pray that you would give them wisdom to apply your word to the topic at hand. Lord, allow us to love one another enough to keep discussing this issue. Lord, we give you glory and honor, and thank you for the freedom to do things such as this today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.